Hello again everybody and welcome back to the channel. It's British Up Geek here and we are again at Denim Aerodrome Echo Golf Lima Delta with the Just Flight PA28 uh, Piper Arrow 3 with the channel livery. So uh, be sure to click like and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments below as well of course. Today we're going to demonstrate a little bit of a VFR flight but also we're going to track some NDBs en route from Denim to Shoreham and uh, you can see we've got bits ready to go. Uh, tie downs are still on the aeroplane as well and shocks but uh, let's go ahead and get a bit closer and get to work. So then we've used the EFB in the aeroplane to open the baggage doors, open the internal door and things and we can go ahead and just take the tie downs off and the chocks away and we can close the baggage door when we're ready. If we want to we can open the oil door that all important oil inspection during our pre-flight checks and when we're ready we can just go ahead and close that again and there we go you can see it's closed itself shut and the baggage door is now shut too so then we're using the old KX 170 and 175B units today for the radio and things like that uh, we're going to go through the basics of the flight today So on your screens you should be able to see a bit of an idea of a planned route from Denham all the way down to Shoreham using a Sky Vector to plan a bit of an idea of the route and it's using the world VFR maps. Uh, within that you can see multiple areas that we need to avoid. So the Heathrow ATZ where Denham actually falls under, um, there's an airspace restriction of surface up to 2500 foot. Uh, however, at Denham you can leave north out of the ATZ via Chilton and we're going to be using the St Giles Church today as our VRP for exit uh, which is just to the left of the Chilton NDB so we're going to track that and we're going to tune that 277 into the ADF we're then going to be turning left up towards Wickham Air Park before then tracking the Woodley NDB flying down south to Blackbush NDB across over Farnborough Airfield and we have to cross that at two to two and a half thousand foot only. We transition over Farnborough and you can see as well there's different bits so in the Farnborough little area of airspace or that London TMA zone there's a restriction of 3,500 foot up to flight level 1905 so in that instance we need to be below 3,500 foot for that section of the flight uh, so pretty much today we're restricted to about 2,000 foot all the way. We're then going to track a Midhurst VOR, so slightly different to the NDBs. We're going to be using NAV1 in the unit itself to track the Midhurst VOR of 114.0. Uh, and I know I said this is a VFR flight, but I'm doing this so that you guys can see how all of the different functions work during today's little flight on the Just Flight PA28. And I'm going to use the autopilot as well, so stay tuned for that. Heading south of Midhurst then, we'll still be at around two to two and a half thousand feet uh, because of all the airspace restrictions. Heading south towards Brighton, there's a restriction of 5,000 to flight level 195. We'll be out of that and flight level 195 to uh, down to 4,500 foot and we'll be avoiding that too. You can see around Gatwick for example, there's an inner zone of surface to 2,500 foot and then the outer zone from Gatwick, the, the outer ring around it is 1,500 foot to 2,500 foot restricted so uh, you know, you'd have to fly through that zone at 1,000 foot if you were going to go through there so we're going to avoid that too and then we're going to head down to Shoreham you can see our basic nav log, our nav log from today and our routes involved and it shows a estimated time uh, around about 40 minutes today and you can see our surface ceiling of 2,000 foot roughly for today. Looking at the Shoreham documents then there's a little print screen of a map for Shoreham you can see at the very top the Gowick CTA with that avoidance of 1,500 to 2,500 foot uh, with that blue box and then you can see the class A airspace saying 2,500 foot 
um, and above. So we're avoiding all of that basically. Uh, we're going to be coming in from Midhurst and then we're going to be heading towards the little point that says B uh, which is the Washington intersection or A which could be uh, Little Hampton. But depending on the runway in use and depending on the entry points as well we might be coming in via Brighton for example in which case we would be using VRP's C or D, Lose Intersection or Brighton Marina. And then we'll either be landing on runway 02 or 20. So it's going to be a nice little uh, enjoyable flight, around about 40 minutes in length today. And there's plenty to fit in, so let's get started. So, into the aeroplane. We've gone through a lot of our pre-flight checks. So, brakes are set. Circuit breakers are all in. They're all in there. Let's hide the yokes for a second. Alternate air is off. Propeller is fully forward. Avionics are off and fuel tank is selected. We're going to go with the left tank for now. Cold engine start then. Throttle half an inch open. There we go. Alternator switch on. Let's bring the aeroplane to life. Battery on. Fuel pump on. Mixture rich. You see the pressure rising and then to idle cutoff. Let's uh, pop the door closed for a second. And we need to put the beacon, rotating beacon light on because we're about to start the aeroplane up. Quick look about. Clear prop. Mixture to rich. And watch the engine stabilised. So, magneto's gone to both. Throttle, we need to adjust as necessary. We need to bring that up slightly, 1400 to 1500 RPM. There we go. While we're doing this, we can get the GPS stuff turned on. And we can set our first waypoint which is going to be the Chilton NDB 277 there we go and you can see that needle there is blank we want to make sure the heading is correct of course When we activate the ADF, that's going to turn on. And you can see there it's picked up the source, the Chilton NDB, and the direction of that NDB itself. So we'll be ever so slightly to the left of that. We're not really going to use it um, because we're looking for the St. Giles Church VRP. Uh, instead, as we climb away out of the airfield to then head west up towards Wickham Air Park. So, what we can also do is tune NAV2 ready um, because we're going to use that a lot later on in the flight today when we get towards Midhurst, so 114.0 There we go and all the other waypoints and things that we're going to use today are going to be um, either visual or they're going to be NDBs You can see NAV2 there, we're going to be using that when we are tracking the VORs we put the transponder on to standby. We're going to squawk 7010 today. It's important as well we turn the VOR, uh, the nav volumes up as well. And we get the radio set. So, time for the ground test. The aeroplane should have warmed up it's a little bit by now. There we go, all temperatures gone up to about 100. So parking brake is set. We know we were clear behind because there was absolutely nobody else behind us. So uh, we can go ahead and just crack on with that here. And uh, propeller full forward and throttle to 2000 RPM, which is around about here. There we go. Lovely. Magnetos check. Maximum drop of 175 RPM. Go. all 
good and the vacuum is within li limits as well. All temperatures checked, all pressure checked, ammeter checked. And then see to panel press to test. And propeller exercise then fall forward. There we go. Alternate air check. Make sure we don't have a loss in there. Uh, manifold pressure or anything like that or RPM. And back on again. Fuel pump off. Fuel pressure check. Throttle retard. Check for rough running. Get the brakes off. So we've uh, turned this on, turned the brightness on, and then I've clicked waypoint a couple of times until we can see the nearby NDBs. So it says there that Chilton, which is what we've also got tuned on the ADF of 277, it says it's on a heading of 354 degrees, and you can see there it's uh, about 34 nautical miles away. So, and on that basis, we can look at 354, and actually that's pretty correct there see with the white needle there quite happy with that so brakes off little brake test And make sure the landing light's on as well for taxi. So before takeoff checklist then, battery master is on, alternator switch is on, flight instruments have all been checked already. So we're happy with those. Uh, fuel pump needs to go on. Uh, the fuel selector, fullest tank selected. We could probably put that to the right tank now because we've been running left for a little while. Mixture is set, alternate air is closed, uh, engine text with T's and P's are in the green, propeller set, flaps are set as required. We're just going to go over zero today. Trim is, we need to make sure in neutral, it is. And we're checking the approach. Controls are free, and we need to make sure the door is latched. Let's get the anti collision lights on. Peter heat on. Nobody's coming. We can turn that off to get rid of the EFB so we can see things a little bit better. And light up with the runway. Let's go. Tease a piece of the green speed tonight. Go gear up. Now we're climbing away over the golf course at the moment. the M25, we're looking for the A road, which you can see coming up, and we want to stay there, there it is, we want to stay to the right hand side of that as we climb away. Thousand feet, let's bring our throttle back a little bit, we don't need a full throttle, make sure we've got our, our transponder set as well. And away we go, you can see our distance to the Chilton VOR, the Chilton NDB. So it's not just as um, simple as drawing a straight line 
flying from one airport to the next with VFR. Especially in the UK, there's such congested airspace all around the country that VFR is actually quite strictly regulated and it's a lot more complex than IFR. So there's things that I still don't quite remember from years ago when I used to be flying. Um, yeah, so no doubt I've made mistakes in this video to be fair. So we're pretty much at St Giles now and we're just at 2,000 feet so bringing that throttle back. Uh, we've got the nose forward as well, what we're doing and at the moment is trying to let the aeroplane stabilise for our um, cruising altitude. So now we want to turn left and we're off to Wickham Air Park. So we want to stay between 1,500 and 2,500 foot, really. And uh, we can start the timer, so let's start stop. We can turn the fuel pump off now. And I've just got the aeroplane sort of trimmed at about 110 or so knots to hold 2,000 feet. Now bearing in mind we need uh, from the Chilton VOR to our next little point of the journey. We would have a heading that we'd need to fly but also we're going to need to bear in mind the fact that uh, the wind's going to push us so actually we need to try and work out track. Thankfully, things like Sky Vector give us that answer, and it's saying we need a track of 265. So, right about here. Now, this is where autopilot can be used. So, try to get the aileron trimmed a little bit. So, let's get rid of that. This is where this comes in. So we've got it on heading mode. We want heading mode on. We need to make sure that that bug is in the middle. And autopilot on. And away we go. Now interestingly, there's a little secret button here and I wanted to show you guys that. So, we're at 2,000 foot now and if we wanted to hold that altitude, you know, which we kind of do, we can click that button there and that enables altitude hold mode. So now, no matter what we do with the throttle, you know, if we can go and stick full throttle in, we should, the aeroplane should, hold that limit that it set itself. Bring our heading slightly more towards uh, due west, and there's our autopilot steering us away. You can see there we're holding 2,100 foot, and we've accelerated to 125 knots. Uh, but let's bring the throttle back slightly, and uh, let's get our timer back out because. wanted to fly that part of the journey for 3.4 minutes and we should then be able to see White Waltham in the distance and there it is. Beyond that then we want to look at the Woodley NDB which is going to be next and using Navigraph or whatever else uh, we can get that ready we can tune in the Woodley NDB frequency of 352 so 3 Two. You can see there that NDB needle switched and you can see the direction to it now. So what we can do, we can flip the Omni around if we want to, um, 18, about 170, so let's turn to heading at 170.
the little nav blip that will come into play shortly once we get closer to the VOR uh, the nav will activate itself and away we go so we're using a little bit of the autopilot and the just flight PA28 at the moment just to make things a bit easier for us we're going to fly directly over the Midhurst VOR and in, the, in doing so we're going to see the autopilot wiggle the wings for us to remind us that we're over flying the VOR so we're going to give that a go and uh, see what happens but uh, anyway we're going to be in the cruise for a little while we haven't got too long for this little journey but we're pretty much avoiding congested airspace Heathrow on that left hand side and we're going to be going over Farnborough but we're going to be below the Farnborough transition for a lot of other aeroplanes with that strict limit of two to two and a half thousand feet. And you can see there we need to actually to about 270. Let's try and keep that white needle in line. There we go. So the autopilot's flying this for a little bit. And if we want to, we can turn the autopilot altitude hold feature on, the little added feature, um, by just clicking at the top, Piper. And now we've got rid of the function of autopilot altitude hold, which is a little hidden secret feature that just flight have added in for convenience. But we don't necessarily want to use it, of course. So, because we're going to be tracking a Midhurst VOR, we're going to want to turn that onto voice. And you can see that it's already picking up the frequency because the little nav blip has disappeared. So what we could do if we really wanted to is we could pretty much go direct now to the Midhurst VOR. Instead of tracking the Woodley NDB. But we know once we pass the Woodley NDB we want to head towards Blackbush. Um, and we are flying VFR as well, so we could be looking out the window looking for different reference points. That's uh, White Waltham down there. And we're pretty much heading directly towards the next NDB, so... You know what, now what we could do, we want to head down that way towards Farnborough, let's just tune new one, uh, Blackbush 328. Wait for that to sync and pick up the new frequency. There we go, and turning bit. starting to rise but for this next section when we we're looking to pass over Farnborough airspace we need to be at 2,000 to 2,500 foot so 2,200 is good you know just being 2,250 for example gives us that nice little bit of margin so just allowing the aeroplane to sort itself out and stabilize but we're now flying directly towards the Blackbush NDB before we start to track that Midhurst VOR, um, we're going to fly over Farber Airport. So on the nav log, it's only a couple of minutes. Uh, we could reset the timer, for example, if we really wanted to. 
Um, but from Woodley to Blackbush, it's only about 4.6 minutes on the timer before we reach it. And then 2.2 minutes on a track of 139 degrees to take into account wind. That will take us directly over Farnborough Airport. And the one I've got installed is the one by Burning Blue Designs. Really good paywear scenery that they've released. Then we're going to focus on how to use the, the Midhurst VOR stuff. So what we want to do is rotate this needle until that yellow line centralises. Um, and the reason for that is because we want to track that VOR precisely. You can see the nav 1 rows at the top here. If we're not tracking that quite accurately, it flicks out. flying in a nice straight line to it, that's flush, that's a big cross, and this is a straight line too. Slight correction for heading. So directly ahead of us, that's Blackbush, we can see that, and then ever so slightly to the left, about 11 o'clock, you can see Farnborough Airport uh, in the distance. Just adjusting the trim slightly to allow that nose to come up ever so slightly. And obviously before we'd have departed, we want the Metar for... Shoreham, QNH of 1025. So we're getting close to Blackbush now. The next phase is going to be heading directly over Farnborough Airfield whilst we get ready to track the VOR all the way down to Midhurst and then making our way to Shoreham. We've been about 15 minutes or so in the air so now we need to flick the tanks to keep the balance level. We can start reset the timer. Checking all our T's and P's. RPM needs to come down a little bit. was okay but it seems to have gone a little bit over the red so we're checking that all the time and a little adjustment on the altitude on the pitch and the trim because we've got a new throttle setting really working at the moment to focus on our altitude because there's a specific 500 foot gap as we go over Farmer that we need to meet. And it means that we've sacrificed a bit of speed to achieve it, but that's okay. And I'm trimming for that really now. There we go, that should be quite nice for us. So we're pretty much passing Blackbush, so now we're going to be turning autopilot off so let's turn heading mode off, autopilot off and what we can do now to prepare for the next bit we want to flick that to Omni. And 
the reason for that is because now there's a feature in it in this that allows us to track the VOR and fly the course. So there's Farnborough Airfield, Farnborough Airport. We'll be flying straight over the middle of that. 2,250 foot roughly there, that's good. And what we want to do now is we want to turn this needle to make sure that that is centralised. Trying to balance the trim as the aeroplane's stable. So we need to make sure that as we fly over Farber Airport, we're within the altitude limits, but also we've rotated the OBS knob, which is the yellow button down there, the yellow, yellow dial uh, with the yellow arrow, so that the CDI needles centre with the TO flag visible, which is up here. What we then want to do is we want to bank the aeroplane to bring it onto the correct course. We want to select that heading needle there so that that's in line 2. And we can then command the autopilot in the little PA28 to maintain the course to the VOR. Flying over Farnborough. So now we're looking to turn a bit more south, there's a needle there. So now we're going to track a VOR in the PA-28. There we go, that's a straight line. Make sure that's centralised too. And we want to now turn the autopilot back on. Heading switch back on. And now we are pretty much flying um, direction to the VOR. We need to make sure that we keep that TO flag in place and we try and keep that dead center along with that. So you can see there it throws it out. But the aeroplane's flying, of course, directly now towards the Midhurst VOR. Although we are losing altitude a little bit so let's get the nose up because we're still having to manage pitch throttle everything else of course and you can see there that we've got six nautical miles to go because we've also gone into here and tuned the frequency decibel over, 11.3 nautical miles to go, there we go, 6 minutes, awesome, wonderful little feature, of course if we were going to fly through icing and things we could put uh, heating and everything else on as well, and uh, cabin air to max, uh, hot, and we're just enjoying the scenery. Now naturally I'd probably be flying this manually myself, but I'm trying to show you guys all of these amazing features in the PA-28. For I've just flying. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and be sure to hit subscribe as well. So one thing with the autopilot is we need to make sure that we've coupled it perfectly. So we have to make sure that over here, this is set to nav1. So 
we have to make sure that it's coupled. In this instance, we have to make sure that this button here is set to Nav 1, of course. If we flicked it over to Off or Nav 2, then it wouldn't be tracking the VOR at all. So that's something else to bear in mind. And watching our altitude there, because we are climbing up a little bit, we need to make sure that we are below 3,000. Let's have a quick check of the charts. En route, to, uh, yeah, so 2,500 foot to 3,500 foot for this little section. And then in a second, we're dropping into another restriction. Which is 2,500 foot. And that's as we get a little closer. And actually, that's coming up fairly soon. So want to start a bit of a descent. Basically when we are parallel with Dunsfold, which is over there, that's where we need to be at our next altitude target. below 2,500 foot. So we're going to target 2,000 again. There we go. Five miles to go to Midhurst. Just trimming the aeroplane up once it's stable at least. should also do is uh, get ready with the local Q&H at 1025 which is there so we're all good and of course the aeroplane's flying the course straight to the VOR station now I'm going to leave it on autopilot as we pass the VOR station because I want to show you guys what happens when you overfly the aerodrome or the VOR station I should say uh, and as I said a few minutes ago one minute ago as we pass that station we should get a bit of a wiggle so the wings of the aeroplane should wiggle left wiggle right and that's it's basically it's indication for us that we've overflown the VOR folds off back over there in the distance. Such great scenery in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Focusing on the outside a bit too much and we've uh, allowed ourselves to drop 200 foot. One mile to go to Midhurst. A little correction on the needle there to make sure we're maintaining our course. I'm pretty sure right down below us there is the VOR station, funnily enough though it's not obviously rendered in properly in the sim. When we pass it, we should get a little wiggle of the wings. You can see there, we've rolled left slightly, and now we've rolled right again. So that's the aeroplane's indication that we've overflown and you can see the two 
has now disappeared and we've got a from flag so now we're flying a radial uh, away from Midhurst VOR and it will settle down as, uh, eventually on the nav log then from Midhurst we want a track of 136 so let's make sure the heading bug is centralised flick it back over to heading and we go 136 and now we're not tuning the VOR anymore, we're tracking with heading mode. Track takes into account our wind direction. Just make sure we're not climbing. And if we didn't take into account the wing, we'd want a magnetic heading of 160 degrees. And this little leg is uh, 10 minutes. Start the timer. Probably about nine, eight and a half to nine minutes now. Really. Again, we've been flying for a little while now, so let's switch the tanks back across. And I've come ever so slightly to the left um, of the VRP, but actually, uh, after a little bit of an orbit, uh, we found it here. So you can see that north-south road, east to west road, and the intersection, big roundabout, Washington intersection. So there's our VRP. And what we can do is pretty much follow this road, even though I'm going the opposite direction now. We can follow that road all the way back towards Steining. There's the road, it takes us all the way to Steining, and there's like an intersection of Y Junction here, and then directly down from there is Shore Airport. So there's lots of um, different rules depending on what aerodromes you're flying into, of course, and uh, they might require you to fly overhead first before joining a circuit or whatever else. Um, runway 02 or 20 at Shoreham apparently is the favoured runway. We're going to land on 20 today with a slight crosswind as the winds are coming from 160 degrees. So we're landing on that runway right there, which is quite cool. Um, and effectively we're just going to go in for a straight in approach, although in real life I may be required to fly in overhead first. So let's look at configuring for our descent. Let's get the idle down. Let's get throttle down towards idle, but not idle itself. We can just set a uh, nice RPM for descent. There's the runway. Uh, we're effectively joining in for a straight in approach, flying a, like a really extended base leg, I guess. Again, just in case of a go around or anything like that. And you can see now we're 2.7 miles away from the airfield. There's the runway. What's our speed? Let's bring that speed down to the white band. Not idling. If you idle in this as well, because of the retractable landing gear, you get all sorts of warnings pop up. And now we're in the white band. Gear down.
and we're positioning for finals. About 90 knots now. Let's bring in some flaps. There we go, full flaps. Actually, we want two red, two white on the puppy, says the first. We don't want to chase it too much. We can make small adjustments to try and achieve it. There we go. Throttle to decrease the rate of descent. And in we go to Shoreham. Smoothest landing, of course. But we are down. Um, we're still requiring a bit of rudder to stay on the centre line. So let's come off on uh, taxiway Foxtrot, which is a grass taxiway. And we'll get parked. Collision lights on, fuel pump off, meter heat off. Drop the latch. And we can turn our transponder back to standby. We can just find somewhere to park up. So for the purposes of this, I'm just going to swing it to the left. So we can get a shut down. There we go, that'll do us. Let's get the door open. So we can just bring the mixture to off and switch the magnetos to off too. Take the beacon off, landing light off. We turn the battery masters off and of course we need to make sure we switch the tank off. So there we go, a little journey from Denham Aerodrome down to Shoreham uh, near the Brighton coast. Hope you've enjoyed it, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you've got some great VFR routes you'd like me to try out then let me know as well. Be sure to check out all of my other Piper PA28 tutorials as well. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you all for a live stream very soon.